Thanks so much, Alba. Thank you, everybody, for joining, joining me here today, especially here before lunchtime. Uh, I think this will be a very interesting follow-up to the question earlier on uh, Digital Twins. So hopefully, uh, today, my goal here for these uh, next uh, couple of minutes will be to give you an idea of how Siemens is working towards the Digital Twin in terms of uh, ethics and sustainability. My name is Alexander. Uh, as Alba mentioned, I'm a senior uh, developer for XR and business development in Siemens. People usually know us for doing uh, dishwashers and uh, uh, toasters, but we are heavily, uh, heavy players in the uh, process industry, in the manufacturing industry, with over 300,000 uh, people employed worldwide, with 72 billion in revenue last year. We are uniquely positioned, uh, in this case, to join the IoT with the sensor data, since, since we have a lot of the uh, digital hardware already in the factories, in the plants where, where we are deploying. So hopefully, here I can give you an idea of what we're doing. In this talk, uh, I'll structure it to, in three parts. So the first, just to give you some context uh, of why we're deciding this as a business strategy. Secondly, some examples of how we are working with our partners today and how are we integrating it. And then thirdly, which specific solutions and which specific uh, platforms do we have to get this into place? So, we all know we have an uh, ongoing crisis since, uh, from uh, climate change to uh, civil conflicts. This is the current state of the world, and right now we need to be prepared to tackle them as they don't seem to be going anywhere uh, any sooner. So, first off, we have uh, climate which according to UN calculations, the 1.5 degrees Celsius that we're looking into uh, could be exceeded for the first time within uh, 2026. So this makes not only a business decision, but an actual mandate to start taking climate into consideration, especially at the um, world scale that, uh, that we're working in. Uh, ongoing pandemics also stressed uh, supply chains. During the, the COVID uh, crisis, we saw businesses becoming significantly more digital, much more leaner. And also due to recent conflicts, we also saw a lot of supply chains being disrupted, uh, a lot of calls for ethical solutions, sustainable solutions. Um, it, all in all, these add up to start uh, making so that we have to think of them as ongoing um, situations rather than just one-off events, unfortunately. So here we find ourselves needing to be more flexible uh, to actually meet the demands from these different regions, from different countries. And how did we start to, to try to master these uh, different um, different supplies coming from different regions. So we are combining the digital uh, with the actual production line uh, at the factory level when, when doing products. So up here in the picture, uh, this is um, Ethan LaChapelle. He's a picture here, a small boy. He, he had a, um, his limb cut off and he did his first prosthetic arm uh, when he was uh, around 16 just with items that he found uh, around the house. Uh, today he has his uh, own company, so he's the CEO and founder of uh, Unlimited Tomorrow, doing over 80,000 uh, in uh, yearly revenue. And he does prosthetics for uh, uh, people without limbs. He uses here NX, this is one of the tools that we have. So he can custom fit prosthetic arms at a fraction of the cost at what it would cost uh, going to a hospital to an enterprise solution and, uh, and deliver it directly to people who, who need it. Uh, amidst the global pandemic, we also used our technology to efficiently adapt production process from kegs to cans. Uh, there was a major disruptive in, uh, in supply chains, as I mentioned earlier, and so getting Actually, people even didn't attend uh, retailers that often or um, local, local pubs, local cafes. So as consumers were taking more and more to their homes, 
um, here with the Willows, they found an, a need to actually start delivering it in more bite-sized um, products. And so they changed their whole factory from producing and delivering uh, in kegs into producing and delivering in cans. So this meant that uh, the production uh, went increased over 25% and they managed to sail out the, uh, this crisis, this specific pandemic crisis. Um, for custom eyewear as well, for example, we have uh, Umayo co-founder, Daniel uh, Slabo, that he's doing 3D printing of custom eyewear. So this has, made, uh, this has allowed him to reduce carbon footprint, um, gathering mater sourcing materials from all, all over the world where they can now be sourced locally. People can buy their own PVC or whatever uh, material that they need to make their eyewear out of. And this can all be sourced and produced locally with the factory in uh, Kreiling near Munich in Germany. So this, this is just some of the examples where we have been leveraging our knowledge and our expertise to bring manufacturing processes, materials closer to people, so reducing the gap that it has need to transport globally. What is the key success factor though? It's the way that we integrate data with the actual technology and the manufacturing process. So information is infinite. If we have sensor data, as much as we collect, that's as much as we can use. And so the more data that we can gather, uh, the more possibilities we have then to create these opportunities for businesses or unlock new materials or unlock new technology or new processes. A single factory from uh, our statistics can gather over uh, 2,000 terabytes of data in a month. So that would be more or less half a million movies uh, on any streaming platform like Netflix or, uh, or Amazon. So this is a huge, huge, huge stream of information that we need to capture and use efficiently. This is where the digital twin then comes in. So we gather all of this data, uh, transform it, massage it, digest it, filter it, in ways that will then make the most uh, towards the different businesses' uh, strategies. So we have a um, production where we are designing, realizing, and optimizing a continuous loop these different integrated uh, information technologies towards the product so that we can output exactly what it is we need, whether it is to reduce consumption, reduce carbon footprint. So here we start out by, with the product ideally what we are trying to achieve. We can then integrate the entire product life cycle and plant life, life cycle. So not only can we simulate what the project might look like, but what the process of manufacturing might look like. And this goes anything from the bill of materials to the sourcing of the material to the actual production, uh, actual production line. So until now, these were two, two separate worlds. As I mentioned in the beginning, we are uniquely positioned because we also own much of the manufacturing processes and the plants to actually start bringing this data uh, together for the product lifecycle. So this is our digital enterprise uh, um, st strategic solution that we have been developing. We generate the data, we capture the data, um, output the performance, and there's this continuous loop of optimization that goes into creating the product. So this is just a schematic of, uh, of the design, realize, and optimize loop that I was mentioning. So we'll have a digital twin for the product, and we have a digital twin for the actual production of that product. They live in two separate uh, life cycles. They meet somewhere in the middle, and that's the, that's the full comprehensive digital twin that we are trying to achieve. So in this case, here we have the digital twin of the actual product. So this is where we do at design time, for example, stress tests, mechanical tests, aerodynamics tests, uh, CFD, so continuous fluid dynamics. This is part of our uh, NX solution. This could be with CAD. Um, this could be done with BIM. Um, so we have a whole slew of solutions to actually design and simulate the project to, to do actual digital twins at design phase. 
The digital twin then for the production line, this then involves having a virtual model of the shop floor. Uh, and this is where we actually then simulate the manufacturing process. It will include uh, machines, lines, processes, um, different stages of operation. So this is now independent from the, the product. Although it, it has to inform how the product will be, this is in a different type of digital twin. And so real production, it runs smoothly from start since everything is already simulated. We have uh, tests done, validation done at, at all the phases. We have our TIA, so this is the totally um, integrated automation tier, which is the, uh, the solution that will then deal with the processes and we can do then, for example, predictions, uh, prediction analysis uh, and simulate what it would be like to change the production line, how would that affect the, the, the product. So what does this allow? Oh, the, the reason I'm mentioning this is this will then lead to um, a much better solution for sustainable products, not only introduction, but innovation and maintenance. So because we, with little changes, we can simulate the whole new way how a factory or shop floor can work, we save that in energy, we save that in uh, material. We don't need to physically change everything about or rebuild it where we have these processes that are uh, being simulated in a digital twin. So we have the EBOM, the MBOP that are essential for our flexibility in production. And we can more or less manage these bill of materials uh, with different simulation types to, to, to then either um, optimize our uh, shop floor or optimize the product. So this then leads us to uh, the sustainability parts. This, we have been uh, doing civil simulation for uh, different types of plants. We have lighthouse factories that are full digital twins that are being built at design time from the ground up and being run on the same uh, 3D model, on the same staging model. And we have managed to reduce immensely the energy capacity, so the energy output of those buildings. We can simulate different times of the, uh, of the day or of the year where we should uh, be more or less efficient. And all of this allows us to achieve our, uh, um, our, pro our production points uh, for, for climate action. So as we need at least 30% less of global CO2, um, we, have, we realize that actually 30% of global CO2 emissions come from industry worldwide. That 38% um, of the energy is being actually consumed by the industries. And only 13% of all global waste is recycled. So this is something that we are actively trying to, to tackle. 38% of the companies so far are leveraging the benefits. Um, an added value that this type of digitalization will, uh, will allow. And so we need to scale more. We, are really, we have all the parts in place, we have all the systems, we have all the hardware in place. It's really started about starting to connect these, uh, all these data points. So this is our, um, this is our sustainability then a strategy for how to holistically connect all of these uh, systems. With fewer resources, we can enable uh, better reuse, recycle better. In essence, we'll uh, make the operation much more efficient, reduce cost, reduce waste. So these are all, they sound like buzzwords, they sound like uh, catchphrases. We have this very much uh, in a tangible, measurable for, um, form with the use cases that I'll present here following up. So in essence, it will lead up to much less material in the resource um, efficiency. In energy, we have seen uh, savings up to 40% with the buildings, um, digital screens that we have with smart infrastructures, with the generator outputs that we can achieve. We've also seen uh, up to 40% 
on carbon saving, being able to simulate different processes with different materials actually before sourcing them, and being able to make much more leaner uh, changes to the supply chain. So I'm seeing I'm a bit brisk before time. I'd really just want to get to a couple of use cases then on how we are combining these technologies. So this one is one that's very dear to me. I was involved uh, in the demo case in Web Summit last year in Lisbon where we were sh uh, showcasing Nemo's garden. If you Google this, you can find a lot of information about this. So this is a um, sustainable underwater farming with digital twin solution where it's a pesto factory in south of Italy. They build pesto un underwater um, in these kind of greenhouses and they have a digi full digital twin that you can explore in VR up in the surface. So what, and this is all connected by IoT data in real time and you can actually uh, mm, do updates in, in the greenhouse remotely in VR or, at, or in a console. So this has, for one, allowed the product to grow much better since it's not up in uh, the land, it's not uh, permeable to the fluctuations of a lot of climate changes, day and night cycles. Here the temperature is mostly um, the same. They can manage the, out the output of the pesto. It's exactly the same quality that they would need for their product. And instead of a deep sea diver diving there every day to change um, HVAC values or see the blinds or whatever it is, we can operate this all remotely. Oh, sorry. So here is another example for uh, Ving Group, where they went from zero to cars in 21 months, and for smartphones to ventilators in three weeks. So this is the way that they changed their whole supply chain. They had a factory, and they needed to virtually stage everything to change their product, and they achieved this in record time thanks to digital twin simulations. Here in our own planning and optimizing for digital factories. So we are using the Siemens DI, which stands for uh, Digital Industries Portfolio, some of the solutions that I'll show you in the uh, upcoming slides, to get a better product output and uh, less CO2 emissions. With Mercedes, we also have a partnership for them to, with them to simulate flow dynamics at design time for their products. You might have heard as well uh, with Volkswagen and the ongoing partnership we have with the NVIDIA Omniverse uh, with our marketplace and the accelerator where we can also simulate the, not only the product but the full assembly line for their cars. With Coca-Cola as well, so in terms of sustainability and reduction of material, we also help them achieve that. With BioNTech, we were there also with uh, the distribution and manufacturing of the COVID uh, vaccine. We also managed to achieve that in, in record time due to disrupted uh, supply chains. In aerospace, for example, so there are a lot of uh, here examples. I won't cover them all extensively just because of time, but feel free then to reach out to me uh, later on and we can go over some of them. Here with Port, the same at, uh, at design time. With Northvolt, we, they were the first digital state-of-the-art lithium battery factory in uh, Europe. So this was a very innovative project where the sourcing of the material really matters, the, uh, the mining process, recalling of the, the batteries, the recycling. So this was all simulated beforehand before even building any of the infrastructure since nobody had any idea what would be uh, exactly needed. I'll pass through a couple of them so that we get to exactly the solutions that we, that we offer. So within the digital enterprise portfolio, these are some of the tools that we are using today to achieve these digital twins. There's not only one single platform, they're kind of modular, so that's depending on the, um, the vertical or the sector that you're using. You can mostly adapt it to what you need. So we have here for software design, Portfolios for software design. This is where we do simulation and design at, soft, at the product level. For automation engineering, for example, um, technomatics, 
both process insulate, process simulation is what our customers use the most. They are there then integrated into their own solution, their own backend. These are usually um, cloud solutions and they can also be deployed as um, independent instances. Here for motion control, for drives, for example, we have uh, say train for what we're doing with uh, trains and carriages. <coughs> Cybersecurity, op center as well. So these are all cloud uh, tools for security. So as you see, there's a lot of it. If you have any doubts, feel free to uh, get in touch with me. You can also book any experience centers to get to know more of these uh, solutions or to try them out. Feel free to uh, link up if you want to learn any more about the tools. And I would say we can open up the floor for some uh, questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alexander. All our gratitude. Uh, such a remarkable deep dive into the union between technology and sustainability. We can see that digital twins can help to reshape the fabric of sustainable manufacturing. So now, do you have any questions? We have four minutes. So take, okay. Nikita Kadra from Warsaw. Uh, just curious, um, this, this type of digital twins for full factory, uh, the building of uh, such thing and then supporting it, it should cost quite significant uh, amount of effort. Uh, what is the general like uh, uh, comparison in uh, like overhead on the like uh, rail manufacturer building and like digital twin uh, manufacturer building? Thanks. What? That's a great question. Uh, the price has come down in recent years. It used to be overly costly, like in, in the millions, actually. But we have a lot of platforms, even today, just with both Unreal or Unity or even standalone libraries, that a lot of the, at least the capturing phase, the initial digital 3D model can be significantly lower. I think the greatest cost will come in having actually the, the sensor data in the, either the shop floor or the buildings that you're trying to get data from, getting the... <coughs> Sorry, the correct data from the energy-wise, um, any type of sensor data. In our case, it's an advantage because we're already there since we build the buildings, since we build the factories. That data is really just available. So I would say for somebody who doesn't have those sensors available, that would be their greatest cost because that is hardware that needs to maintain. It's an infrastructure that needs to be secure. In our case, we will deal then more with the connection, so making, trying to, to bridge all those different sensors and trying to extract data out of them. So that's maybe more we where we're working at because we already have the hardware in place. Thank you. So we have one last <coughs> question here. Yeah. Say hi. Uh, Ricardo Lida from, from Chile. Um, my question is, uh, which are uh, your top challenges for um, onboarding this kind of projects in those fabrics, you know, and manufacturing processes uh, from sea level to operational, you know, level. You. Yeah. Part of my job is really just education. So uh, this is very, uh, it's an innovative uh, area, right? So a lot of showing what can be done. Luckily, we've been in this uh, space for many years. We have a lot of POCs going on, uh, MVPs where we have extracted already those type of ROIs. And so we usually come already together with a business plan so we can show them where are the business uh, opportunities, where are the cost savings, how would that translate in three years, four years, scale across five factories, six factories, uh, two or three countries. And so they can start, in business you'll more or less understand the language of uh, return on investment. So that's maybe how you can position it. In terms of more on the ground implementation, then it's, we usually use a lot of solutions for training. So blue collar workers that are in the factories that are used to maybe uh, smartphones or tablets that they now all of a sudden need to use HoloLens or uh, real wear device and do all these crazy gesticulation. So there's a training phase, there's an onboarding phase. Um, I would say that's about it. At, at sea level, it's mostly with the business case while in advance. And then once we are on the ground, it's with VR training. And we use a lot of VR training as well to do uh, most of these use cases. Awesome. So now, yes, um, let's give a big applause to Alexander Piedade. Thank you very much.